Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ballet at Brand. So in this video, I want to talk about something uh, very serious, right? Uh, I know Nerd Girl is very good about talking about, you know, tribalism and maximalism and, and where that can lead to from some of her, uh, you know, her previous studies, right? But I want to ask the hexagons and, you know, I want to challenge some of the hexagons that are we becoming what we most hated and are we becoming what we feared most, which are, let's say, what the Bitcoin maximalist community has become. Now, let me give an example. So even just most recently at the Bitcoin 2021 conference, uh, there was pretty cringe moment where Elon had onboarded and then he had sold some and then literally like a like a bipolar disorder or like a schizophrenic person, the Bitcoiners went from happy and their friend and, oh my God, Elon's the best to this person's a piece of crap. Elon needs to be, you know, dealt with whatever that might mean for dumping and selling the price. And I've mentioned in my, one of my very recent videos, either on this one or the other channel, that uh, I was recently falsely accused of slander and the initial accusation, it's from an account that's completely deleted. So that's kind of suspicious that it just started less than 10 days ago. But the point is, is, so the damage was done and then someone just totally jumped on me for the thought of me selling. And it almost reminded me how, uh, how it did with, uh, with Elon for, for selling Bitcoin and kind of going back on that. And so as someone that's got over six plus years of an average staking length, uh, I find it disgusting that a lot of people jumped on, on that person's initial slander with no regard, with no evidence. And then the thing is, is once again, it turned into ad hominem where now they're calling me fat. You know, uh, one of them was fuck that chubby fuck, you know, fuck that chubby fat fuck is kind of what it was. And it's like, well, what does that have to do with me selling if that was actually true? And so I'm afraid that the hexagons as a whole, not all, but we're growing so expansively and we're getting so big as a community that we are becoming viral from pre-viral. And what that comes with is it comes with more attention. And once again, it comes with more hate. I literally remember when it was Richard Hart, and then it was Hexologist, and then it was RG3 with Discourse Syndicate, and then I would jump on with Discourse Syndicate along with Johnny Chaos and all of the other earlier hexagons that would stream. And now the community has become so big, not only in Telegram, but in Pulse Chain too, that it just shows the rate of growth that we are going. But I want to challenge everyone, if you have the power, if you have the presence, the presence of being a influencer or of having, you know, a certain amount of followers that we don't, and I'm not saying that anyone's doing this. I'm just saying that since I've noticed this, I want to use my influence to, to sway people into the right direction. But I would like for all of us to really check ourselves and make sure that we're not becoming too tribal or too toxic. Um, I saw in, in one video the other day where someone was talking about Hex, and then I think that same person was talking about like Polkadot or Kusama, something like that, right? And uh, and initially the, the person's called a shit coiner because they were speaking about something that wasn't just Hex. And just like I saw the, tox the toxic maximal uh, maximalism when I was initially following Richard Hart for about the first nine months. So when I was following him, March, 2017, Richard's full Bitcoin maxi. Sorry about that. Let me turn that off. Um, Richard was a full Bitcoin maxi and he was saying, you know, fuck Ethereum. Ethereum sucks, all of this. But then that maximalism led to him missing out and getting his Bitcoin gains cuckold by the Ethereans. And now I see, and I'm not saying this is happening to hexagons, but I'm saying that when hexagons are only, you know, all I see is, you know, all I see is hex, uh, all I see is hex and, and pulse chain and everything else is a shit coin. 
And then I challenged one person. I said, well, what about the, uh, the, the pulse chain, uh, sorry, the, the, the fork of pancake swap, right? Like the pulse swap liquidity token, which is a third project by Richard Hart and, you know, pretending that they don't see. And so I just want to challenge everyone to think for yourself and, you know, people in general tend to fall into this group think and this not even tribalism, but this kind of mentality that like, oh, this is the consensus. So, you know, everyone that does this, you know, even like I mentioned, even with uh, the other video about the late sacrificing, you know, let people make their own decisions. But then, you know, it seems that everyone falls into and most of the people fall into the consensus of like, yeah, those guys are retards or yeah, those guys are stupid or idiots if they're doing that. And it's like, man, can we can we like not have to agree with everything that other people are are saying in consensus, you know, because I I even hear with uh with like November the 18th, right? Oh, that's when some of the speculation of, you know, some people thinking that the pull chain is going to come out and that's fine, but doesn't mean I'm going to retweet it, right? Doesn't mean that I'm going to jump on with that. And so just like with the sacrificing late, everyone's got their own opinions on that. But once again, I'm not telling anybody what to do. And then same thing with uh, those other examples that I mentioned that that just make me uh, just make me curious. You know, um, like I like I say, the the last thing I want to do with someone that's got over four thousand, almost five thousand, right, steadily growing each uh, each month. The last thing that I want to do is accidentally be deceiving people or unknowingly have a heavy bias that now affects that person that's that's watching for the first time it affects what decisions they make right they might look up to you and then they say oh you know brandon's got an influence and he thinks that sacrificing late is for shit coiners well guess what i might not sacrifice late then and then you might miss out on a good opportunity to you know have like a genesis wallet where you could qualify for future airdrops and things like that so I just, uh, I noticed some of the chat and some of the banter where it doesn't have to be all hex, God damn it. And so that's why I'm actually really happy for Pulse Chain is because once again, there's hex and that's just a smart contract on top of Ethereum currently. That's all it is. It's just a smart contract. I get that it's great, but there's literally every ERC20 token and NFT getting copied over and transferred over the system state the pulse chain, and that's going to allow for us to have a network effect, right? And to have the usage and, and utility. But I find it disgusting when hexagons aren't fucking smart enough to realize that pulse chain gains differently through adoption than say hex, which is through store of value. And so when pulse chainers are talking crap on their own bags and they're doing things to, you know, sour their reputation or to sway people from coming in it's like man you're, you're shooting yourself in the own foot you know you're, you're shooting your own foot and you think that you're being you know righteous and that you're doing a good job but you're not smart enough to realize that just because you had gains with gains and success with hex that doesn't mean that that's how pulse chain gains you know you don't just uh gain uh value and pulse by becoming a pulse maximalist and by calling everything else a shit coin like no, people start need to having, you know, people need to start having the the honey versus the vinegar approach. And I've seen Richard even not sour, but I've seen him sweeten up on his sour, right? I've seen him go from Bitcoin maxi to now, okay, Ethereum's got some stuff going on. And then even from, you know, a hex maxi and everything else is a shit coin to like, okay, now we got to do pulse chain and, and, you know, this fork of pancake swap. So it's slowly evolving into what I think is a multi-chain universe, things like this, but more inclusive. And, you know, if, if we're leading by example and, you know, hexagons and pulsicans are going to be like wrote in the history books, then the last thing I that I want to do, even if I don't agree with a token or a coin or a smart contract, that's fine. But it doesn't mean I have to call it a shit coin. Or it doesn't mean I have to say that everything else than pulse or hex or pulse swap is a shit coin. I, I don't have to talk about it, right? But the people that are, it's like, man, you know, not saying anything is an option as well. You know, you don't just have to say something about the issue because you feel that it's important for you to comment on because everyone else is doing the same thing. 
So that's all I really have. Um, you know, challenge to all the hexagons, whatever that might mean to you, whatever hexagon means to you is, you know, a challenge on being able to think freely because there's things that I disagreed with Richard on before. And, you know, a, a majority of the time it's the minority. It's maybe, I don't know, 1% to half a percent of the time and it's ever growing smaller. But it doesn't mean that I can't have a different opinion or just a different reaction than what, not even Richard, but what most of the followers have as an example. So I just want people to, uh, you know, don't narrow yourself into one corner because you feel that you have to go along with the norm just because the general consensus of everybody that is an OG or is in early has that consensus. Like, don't be afraid to be the lone wolf that's like, hey, I don't agree with this. Or, you know, I think the honey versus vinegar approach is a lot better with projects coming in and with adoption coming in. Because the last thing that we want to become, which I've seen us already get, get it before, but it seems ever so growing, is the last thing that you want to become is, you know, now people that sell, they want to sell all of their bags because people are ungrateful that some people are taking profits. And, you know, they, they feel that everyone's here to hodl and be a part of the community. But the second that you realize some gains after 4,000 X, 10,000 X, that you're automatically like the devil or something, you know, some, some heretic where what you're doing, you know, just automatically changes in their opinion, uh, in, in their mind and their bias because they want everyone to hold and they want this narrative to be preached, even though that's the exact opposite of how markets work. You know, markets work by, you know, uh, whatever the demand is. And then also by even people with longer timeframes, they can make up a lot more than people with shorter timeframes, but eventually people are going to have to sell. And what that does is it allows, you know, the wealthy that might have a whole bunch of, you know, assets accumulated. It allows those assets to now be distributed amongst more people, giving them the opportunity, uh, you know, to have that future growth in the next cycle. So that's all I really have. Just want to challenge everyone to uh, think about this, right? This is a long, you know, it's a long-term commitment, especially when you're staking for 5,555 days. And I think that we should welcome the other projects that are coming on to Pulse Chain. And we should welcome as much growth as possible and not just gatekeep ourselves and close the door on ourselves when the door was open. Or if someone's going to shake your hand and you just slap their hand away, like, no, let's, let's have like a win-win business to business relationship. So that's all I have. I'll see everyone on the next video. Thank